Greetings and God bless you in the wonderful name of our living Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Robert Hagen, and what I'd like to do today is, is share God's word on a rest for God's people. And, uh, you have to admit that these troubled times that we're living in with uh, the way things are going on in the world with the COVID-19 virus and uh, protests and all kinds of different things going on that are negative in the world to stand as a son and daughter of the living God to walk forth boldly as a Christian in this day and time is not an easy thing to do. But one of the things that our Heavenly Father has promised us is peace and also that we could be at rest. And when everything seems to be going down the drain around you and things are going to pop everywhere you turn, you're going to be able to have an anchor to where people are going to come to you and they're going to wonder why you can stay so calm in the midst of a storm. What comes to mind is Jesus on the, on the ship crossing the Sea of Galilee with all his disciples. And there was a storm that came up and he, what was he doing? He was sleeping on, the, on a pillow. He was exhausted. He was sleeping. He had no fear. And they woke him up and said, you know, are you really, do you care that we're going to perish? And, and he just calmed the sea. Um, he, that was just something you know, that there was the, that put them at rest. That gave them another opportunity and they shouldn't have doubted, but that's just the way the natural mind works. Sometimes we have doubts and we have to work on those. But anyway, what I'd like to do is start in Genesis chapter two. And we're going to work our way through the Bible for a little while here. And uh, one of the things that's so great about the Word of God is it is the Word of God. It is the, you know, God's heart to man. I mean, he inspired <clears throat> different Old Testament prophets and New Testament prophets to write this word so that we would have a record, so that we would know how to live our lives. And we're going to go to Genesis chapter 2, starting in um, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. OK, now, why did why did God have to rest? He rested not because of he was fatigued or exhausted. He rested. Uh, because of achievement is the note that I have here. The great achievement of the uh, creation of the heavens and earth. And um, it, say he sanctified the day, a day of rest. Um, how many people really take a day of rest every week? It's difficult in, in these times we live in. Many people have to work on Sundays or Saturdays, whatever your Sabbath day is. Um, many people have... Um, always set that day aside as being a day where they wouldn't work. In fact, we go back in the history of baseball, and there are probably a lot of people that know baseball out there, but there was a pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers back in the day by the name of Sandy Koufax, one of the great left, greatest left-handed pitchers I ever saw throw the ball. He would not pitch on a Sunday. And um, the Dodgers got into the World Series. I, I believe they they were in there against the Twins, and he was scheduled to start they had to move him to up to the next day because of his faith. He would not pitch on a Sunday. No matter what they did to convince him to do it, he just wouldn't do it. Yeah, but, you know, I have to respect a man that, that sticks to his principles. Okay, now we're going to go to Matthew chapter 11. Let's go to verse 4. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. You now they wanted to, John was wondering what was going on. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And uh, Jesus' ministry was to heal. It was to teach. It was to heal. It was to show people a way to get back to the father that's the whole reason for this program that's the whole reason for everything that's done on uptime it's to bring people back to a knowledge of the truth 
so that they can have that connection back to the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28, now let's go back to 25. I can't remember. We've got we to go back to 25 for a second here. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whom, whosoever, whosoever the Son will reveal him. Great scripture coming up here. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's one of the great greatest things about becoming a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. You talk about burdens in your life. You have a you say you have a tremendous amount of burdens in your life. And you know, becoming a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, becoming a Christian doesn't automatically get rid of all your burdens. <clears throat> but as you Go down to the, excuse me, you go down to the next verse in 29, and Jesus says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Do you want to find rest for your souls? You want to find rest for your souls? You want to be yoked together with the Lord Jesus Christ. He does have a yoke. There is a burden to carry, but he is the one that carries the majority of the burden. And believe me, if he didn't carry the majority of the burden, we would never make it. Um, it talks about it in Colossians 1, 27. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. There's many times where you're at your wit's end. You don't know what you're going to do. But you know what? You can always pray. And the line's always available. It's always open. It's not busy. Now, God's not going to sit there and go, well, I don't have enough time for Robert Hagen. I don't have enough time for to listen to the prayers of, of my kids. He always, he's anxious and he's more ready to answer these prayers than we are to pray them. You ask not, you have not because you ask not. And we feel bad when we ask. And there's nothing wrong with asking God to bless you. Or asking for things from our Heavenly Father um, to have your needs met. You now, some people get greedy. You know, I, I'm I'm not going to pray to have a a, a brand new uh, fifty fifty sixty thousand dollar car parked out here. I'm perfectly happy with my two thousand one Pontiac. It runs fine. I mean, if the Lord wanted to bless me with one, that'd be great. But it's not a need. You know? Okay, so. This word yoked in this scripture here, in verse 30, is the word zugos, Z-U-G-O-S. And it means a coupling, the beam of the balance. You know, when oxen are yoked together, they're, you know, they're balanced and they work together. Just think about this for a moment. If you were going to be yoked to anything that you could choose, wouldn't you rather be yoked to the Lord Jesus Christ? Than to a dead religion or some type of following or cult like Heaven's Gate, you know, or there's so many of them out there now. I think that being yoked together with the Lord Jesus Christ is really the rest that the people need, even though you're, you know, we're all working for the same thing. We're trying to get people to come to a knowledge of the truth. But being yoked with him keeps us, keeps us in the will of the Father. And the burdens that we have, when we have them, we're going to be able to get to the point where we we rely more and more upon the strength of God and Christ in us to carry us through. Okay, now we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 26. As uh, J. Vernon McGee used to say, we're going to we're going to take a trip in the Bible bus. We're going back to Isaiah chapter 26. I used to listen to through the Bible when I was a kid, long before I accepted Jesus Christ. And one of the things I always appreciated about J. Vernon McGee was he, he, his love and respect for the word of God. That's probably something that got ingrained in my 
in my head and in my heart earlier, early in my life. Okay, Isaiah chapter 26. And in verse 3, Isaiah writing, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. Is it available to have peace in your life? The word of God says it is. It says right here, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. In that scripture that we just read a couple of minutes ago from Matthew, Jesus said to learn of him because he's lowly and meek. The only way that you can learn about Jesus Christ is to go and read about his life in the Gospels and spend time with him and pray. And it's interesting because if you ask the Father to show you, he'll show you. He's not going to say, no, I'm too busy. He's going to show you. He's going to show you things that far will far surpass anything you can imagine. Um, a lot of times there, there are difficulties and struggles that come up in life. And I'm still dealing with some right now personally. But, you know, one thing I know for sure, that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead on the third day. He ascended and he's at the right hand of the Father right now and says he's making intercession even as we're doing this teaching. He's saying, Father, you know, it's rough down there. Yeah, I was there and there's stuff coming up that's going to be that's going to test the faith of my sons and daughters down there. And I want you to be with them. And I know you will. And so that's that should be a, that should be a terrific comfort. I'll tell you right now. OK, now we're going to go to Romans chapter 12. Paul is writing the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. It says right here that we're not to be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you become a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, you still have the same mind. Now, there's ways of renewing your mind. And the best way I know is to study God's word. And it's not just sit there with a bunch of research books. Sometimes you just get in and you just start reading the Gospels. And as you read the Gospels, God will give you the understanding. And he'll show you what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It will show you what it is. And you'll know. Uh, it's the spirit of, of God and Christ in you. You'll just know. There's, there's times when you'll have a thought. <clears throat> Maybe you're in traffic and you're driving along and there's nothing anywhere to be seen. And you, you're going to change lanes. This happened to me when I was a truck driver. And I looked over my shoulder three different times and I put my blinker on. I looked over a third, fourth time, started to change lanes and there's a motorcycle right. I mean, I would have run right over the top of the guy. He, you know, honked at me and. I had the thought to look again, and I didn't. And I believe that was the father saying, Bob, one more time. And after that, I was real careful with that. It's just that, you know, why, why doesn't he care about everything in our lives? He does. He cares about everything in our lives. It's not just us going to, you know, having a church service on a Sunday morning or <clears throat> doing some things midweek. It's uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week that God is concerned about you and me. And if there's somebody that's that's listening out there right now that's wondering, you know, how can my life be such a mess right now, no matter what's going on in it, you can certainly stop and you can ask the Father to show you a way into his love and to, into his peace and his rest, and he'll do it. 
and all you have to do is ask him. And God's not stingy. And he's not going to look at you and say, no, you need to clean your act up before you're going to be acceptable. Because Jesus Christ is the one that came to live his life, that we might have more abundant life. And he came to give his life. All the sin, all that stuff, it, he said on the cross, it is finished. As far as God and Christ is concerned, the redemption is done. It's just a matter of accepting it. And if you do that, you're gonna you'll have a new life. You know, old things will pass away. But it it's not something that you you're gonna pray one minute and then the next minute everything's gonna be perfect. Anybody that's on these programs, uh, if you listen on Sunday afternoon or you listen during the week or you listen to the uh, what Vanessa has been doing. Everybody has a story. And a lot of the stories are really, you know, you wonder how how he was able to become a believer. God had a plan, has a plan for all of us. And why not team up with the creator of the heavens and the earth and see what he's got planned for you? I mean, I sometimes I I just am so fascinated that he would that he even kept me alive as many years as i've been alive through the things that i've done and i just i praise him and i'm so thankful to the father i'm thankful to the lord jesus christ uh, and i'm thankful to have brothers and sisters who are endeavoring to teach his word to the best of their ability and to, um, as we were talking about this before we started recording, I was just a little discombobulated about what I was going to do today. But as I start sharing the word of God, it just seems like thoughts come to you about the nature, the nature of God is love. And peace and joy and being meek doesn't mean being weak. Meekness does not mean weakness. Meekness is uh, is coachability. You know, if you're a coach of a team, you you want to have your guys, you don't want them weak, but you want to be able to coach them. You want them to learn. I had the opportunity to coach the Pee Wee basketball with my brother when I was younger. And we had a ball. I mean, these kids are so fun. They got so much enthusiasm, but they were all just sponges to learn. I don't know how much they learned from us, but we had a lot of fun with them. That was kind of neat. Okay. Now, let's go to um, Romans chapter 10, one of, the, one of the great sections of God's Word. The book of Romans, if you, when you start reading the book of Romans, it's interesting that Paul wrote this, and, and there's, there's so much in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 10, and uh, I'm going to start off in verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. And Paul certainly did a job with that during his ministry. That's what we're doing, endeavoring to do right now. We're endeavoring to preach the word of God. Verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. And whosoever, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, you're sitting at home, you're watching this. And you're saying, I'm just, I'm too bad to be saved. You know, I've lived too, I've lived too rough a life. I've done too many things wrong. I've sinned. I've done this and I've done that. Word of God says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You're changing lordships. Up to this point, Robert Hagen has been the Lord of his life. And all of a sudden, that, that day back in, I believe it was 73, I said, <clears throat> I can't hack this anymore. I need to change lords. And when I did, things started to turn. And people 
out there uh, really need to know that it's available. And, I, and I'm, what I'm trying to do is get back to the rest for God's people. But if, you, if you're in turmoil and you're, you're without God and without hope in the world, the best thing you can do right now is to pray to God. Um, just go to him and say, you know, Father, I, I need you. I need your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, in my life. And um, I know that I haven't done a very good job with my life, but I want to lean on you. I want to trust in you with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. And he'll start to show you stuff. We can all attest to that. I'm certain there's testimony upon testimony of things happening. I've got one, and I'm sure everybody else does too. But it's very important that you take the first step. And I believe the first step is to, you know, get off your own case long enough to realize that God knows every one of your needs. He knows everything you've done in your life. And he's just waiting. He's like the prodigal, you know, the story of the um, prodigal son or what I like to call the forgiving father, which is something I like to teach on one of these days, too. And every day the father went out there waiting for his son. In the Eastern culture, uh, people don't run. You know, it wasn't part of the culture for the father to run, you know, see his son coming and run and hug him and everything. But his father never stopped. Think about this for a second. His father never wavered in his belief that his son was going to return. And I really believe that this is the way God is. There's a lot of people out there that need to return, and God is waiting for them. He, he's waiting for you, just like he was waiting for me. And he's going to run and throw his arms around you. Because... That's how much he loves you. And it's not it's not some kind of religious trip. This is the truth. The truth of God's word. And when you think about that, that son, he didn't he didn't even want to be called a son anymore. He said, just make me as one of thy servants, Father. And that father said to him, no, no, you're my son. You were dead. But you've returned. Now you're alive. It's one of the most amazing stories. If you if you get into, I believe it's in Luke, and you read it, and you put yourself in the position of that son, thinking oh, I'm going to go home and I'm, I just want to be a servant. Maybe I can, you know, he'll forgive me for messing up, taking all my money and taking off. But no, he was waiting for him, and he went out. And when he saw him coming, he was so blessed. He put on the robe. And he gave him the signet ring, and it was just like, you know, my son's home now, and this is this is fantastic that he finally decided to come back. And now that father could be at rest because he was troubled all the time that his son was gone. But to kind of reiterate it, he I don't I don't believe he ever wavered in his belief that his son was going to come back. And that's what I I really think there's people out there today and i know there are that are hopeless but you know god is a god of hope he doesn't ever give up on us we many times are not faithful to him but i'll tell you what right now he's always going to be faithful to you and just and he's going to give you the peaceable a peaceful life in the midst of chaos, which is what the world seems to be dishing out right now by the barrel full. But we can keep that focus on, on the truth that our Heavenly Father loves us. And that, like it says in 1 John chapter 3, Behold, beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But when we see him, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And I think that's a pretty terrific thing. So, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this, this day. I thank you for the truth of your word. I thank you that we can continue to look to you 
and that you are as the forgiving father waiting for his kids to come home so that you can run and give them a hug and welcome them back home. And I thank you for the folks that will be hearing this, blessing each and every one of them, blessing Greg big time for making this forum available and his family. And I thank you for these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.